Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 21, the do's and don'ts of paraphrasing, quotation and plagiarism. There are some really delicate filaments that separate plagiarism, paraphrasing and quotation. I think too frequently academic literacy professionals talk about the sizeable difference between those categories. But really, if you think about it, the difference between paraphrasing and quotation, but perhaps even more markedly, quotation and plagiarism, is so little that it could simply involve a couple of squiggly marks that we refer to as inverted commas. So this vlog today is the last in our series on academic integrity, and I wanted this to be a quick one. I wanted this to be a way for you to improve your writing immediately. So whether or not you're right at the end of your candidature, within weeks of submission, or you're about to start with us, there is something today that will improve your writing, your academic progress and process very, very quickly. That's my goal of the day. So let's start with the positive ones. Let's start with the do's. This is what I'd recommend. Let's do the five do's. One important one, write short sentences. The old truth is each sentence has one idea, one sentence, one idea. And students get themselves into a lot of trouble, all of us do, if we have these incredibly long sentences that end up folding back on each other and readers think, what exactly is going on here? So short sentence, one sentence, one idea. And that means we have to start focusing on the flow of ideas. I often describe great writing as a waterfall. It's a cascade. You can't even see where the limitations or the barriers are. It's just simply smooth. But if I change metaphors, another way of thinking about how these short sentences are put together is as a series of stones that you hop between. So each sentence should take your reader somewhere else. So from the start of your paragraph to the end, I want you to take your reader somewhere. Two, important one, particularly for my guys and gals in the sciences. This is a real issue for science communication. And what I ask of you is make sure that your paraphrasing is shorter than the original. The characteristic of a student that does not understand the original text is when they paraphrase it, it lengthens. The whole reason that you're paraphrasing is to reduce the length of the original. So before you start paraphrasing, make really sure that you understand the truth, the argument of what's going on there. So don't write incredibly long paraphrasing. If it's longer than the quote, use the quote. That's the point. Three. Important one, be confident in your abilities. One of the causes of plagiarism, and collusion in particular, I think, is a lack of confidence in students. And that's why all those paper mills exist, you know, where you can buy an essay or indeed even buy a PhD. Why would such a bizarre service exist? Well, the reason is a lack of confidence. And can I say, by the way, if you try to buy a thesis uh, through these paper mills, that never, never, never ends well. Because remember, the people that are selling those theses aren't as clever as you are. So the problem is, you'll fail your PhD. But we need to also understand that the reason our new milestone structure exists is so that all of us, with transparency, can see the development of your ideas. So you don't arrive at a thesis and magically then submit a thesis. Actually, Actually, it develops over three years and your supervisor and people like me assess your development over those three years. But the reason that students are desperate for help, legal or otherwise, is because they're frightened of failure. And I certainly understand that, they're frightened of failure. But what I would say to you is this, Flinders is a wonderful university and we put a lot of attention on our admissions into our program. You wouldn't be here if you weren't fabulous. Our standards are high so you can soar, so you can be successful. So never doubt yourself and never take those shortcuts. Don't buy expertise, develop your own and be confident in what you can achieve. Right, 
the big one, this one could change your life. We're in the middle of the do's, remember? The fourth do is write clear topic sentences to your paragraphs. Now, a great problem, I think, with the positioning of quotations in prose is where it exists in a paragraph. So my first rule is never start a paragraph with a quotation, never finish a paragraph with a quotation. It should be nicely nested in the middle of your paragraph. And the way you do that is configure a series of really strong topic sentences. Now, I've used that phrase a few times. If you don't know what it means, don't worry. A topic sentence is the first sentence of every paragraph. It provides, if you will, the story of that paragraph. They're difficult to write, but you have magical writing when you start to get them going and working well. And the best way to tell if your chapter in your thesis or an article is working well is just read the topic sentences, the first sentence of every paragraph, and you should gain a sense of the spine of your argument. If you do, you are writing beautifully. Well done you. So remember your topic sentences should be short, sharp, and powerful. Then of course you're positioning the quotation on the basis of a very clear sense of where this paragraph is going to take the reader. Five, the fifth do. Remember we started with talking about short sentences? Well, this bit finishes with write long paragraphs. Write long paragraphs. The key to understanding the positioning of quotations and paraphrasing in your prose is to make sure that you are actually developing an argument through your paragraphs. So the first rule of life I always teach students, whether undergraduates or postgraduates, is the longer the paragraph, the more intricate the argument. So I know that a PhD student is in trouble without reading one word of their argument. If I look at the page and see a series of short paragraphs, I know that that PhD student doesn't know enough. If you know a lot, you have a quite a large paragraph. If you don't know much, you run out of ideas halfway through. So remember, the longer the paragraph, the better. And remember, introduce your quotations. So never leave them as self-standing first sentence of the paragraph, last sentence of the paragraph. Long paragraphs equals a strong interpretation. Okay, there's the five do's. Let's quickly move ah, to the five don'ts, things I ask that you really, 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 really don't do. So the don'ts. One, so important. Don't be a lazy note taker. Rare for me to use the word lazy, but I'm using it with intent here. So a lot of acts of plagiarism or academic misconduct are accidental. They sort of happen because you've been a bit clumsy or a bit lazy, and that does happen, I understand that. But there is no doubt that laziness is also a cause. If students do not know how to take good notes, then that's ignorance, and we can teach you how to handle that. That's no worries. But if you know know how to do better, you know how to create good notes, and you're simply lazy or lacking attention to detail, then my goodness me, that's a real problem. Simple errors like not differentiating between a quotation and a paraphrase, that becomes incredibly serious in a PhD. We started this vlog by talking about just those couple of little squiggles that exist that can make such an enormous difference. In a doctorate, those squiggles can transform your life. Never underestimate the importance of good note taking. Two, really important, avoid over quoting. Now, quoting is incredibly important because it demonstrates intellectual integrity. It demonstrates that you've read the field and you're exhibiting respect for the scholars that came before you. And through footnotes, you're demonstrating respect for the scholars who will follow you. Magnificent. But overquoting is a real problem. Overquoting is a sign of an underconfident student. As you can see, there's all sorts of diagnostics we use, and one of them is if I see a lot of overquoting, I know that student is underconfident. They're hiding behind the words of others. So there is a structural rule that I teach to solve this problem of overquoting, and I call it the one to three rule. So for every sentence of quotation, 
I require three from you. So one quotation, three sentences from you. That's a way to avoid overquoting really quickly. So what goes into those three sentences? Let me tell you. The first sentence that follows the quote is a paraphrase. So what was that quote saying? Second sentence argues and works through why that quotation matters, why it's important. The third sentence that follows the quotation explains the relevance of that quotation to your current work, to your chapter, to your PhD, to your article. So the one to three rule means that pretty quickly you'll stop using those long quotations. Always remember you are using the quotations to scaffold your argument. You're not using them for their own ends, you're using them to build your argument. Three, don't dumb down your research. Look, I understand when we're reading difficult material, it be can become really challenging and really, really frightening. When we're reading material that we don't understand, we can feel our brain working in really new and interesting ways. But if a student is feeling underconfident, then that can only increase that underconfidence. So, do challenge yourself. I want you to keep reading at the top level. When I was 20, I read a wonderful scholar called Althusser. The first time I read Althusser at 20, I understood about 25% of it. And I went, wow, that's amazing. And then I read it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And I still read Althusser. In fact, I've got a new book, obviously he's been dead a long time, but a new edition of his work coming from Amazon right now to keep reading that difficult brilliant work. So please don't reduce the level of your scholarship because the reading is tough. The reading is meant to be tough. You are creating an original contribution to knowledge. It's got to be based on the great stuff, not dumbed down textbooks, guys. So remember, your examiners, go to your bibliography or your reference list first. We know if you're going to pass or fail by reading that bibliography. So give us the good stuff back yourself, you will be able to engage with that tough material, I promise you. Four, or what gets tough, don't rely on editors. Now we're going to do a separate vlog on the role and place of editors with our colleagues in the Office of Graduate Research, but we have to recognise the, that the Australian Council for Graduate Research has allowed the use of editors in the doctoral space. I argued very strongly against that, you know, that's on the record. Uh, I completely disagree with that decision to allow editors on all PhD, but that boat has sailed, I lost that argument. So as the Dean, my job is to ensure these are the regulations about the use of editors, you understand those regulations and you use them if you see fit. Okay, so that's my role as the Dean. Having said that, uh, as a supervisor, I have never, ever, ever, ever used an editor on or with any of my PhD students because personally, as a supervisor, I do not believe in it. Uh, I believe very strongly that part of my job is to make sure that my PhD students are outstanding writers and that they are examined on the capacity to produce that final script. That's my personal and professional opinion. As a dean, I handle it differently. But my students, my wonderful PhD students that I've supervised around the world are known as outstanding writers. They haven't had to use an editor to get there, they are just fantastic writers. Part of what we're doing in a PhD is giving you that confidence to be a great writer. Final one, the don't. Five, don't confuse theory and methods. Mm -hmm. Now I know I upset a lot of our colleagues when I say this and I apologise but it is a truth and I am going to speak it. Please remember that literature reviews are easy, a discussion of methods, that's easy. The what and the how of scholarship is always very straightforward knowledge. It's the why the why you're doing it that is the PhD. Why am I doing this research? Why does it matter? Why now? If you can answer the why, then that is your PhD. Don't get bogged down too deeply in the what and the how. They're straightforward, they're clear. Give me the sparkle of the why. The why is your PhD. 
So I really want to thank you so much. I've had incredible, amazing feedback on this Academic Integrity Suite and some really moving, incredibly complicated, difficult, quite passionate emails, and I thank you for that. This series, I think, has been worthwhile. Academic Integrity is the phrase, I think, of our time, and I hope in this final little vlog you've picked up maybe one idea to test and improve your own writing and your own professional practice. I hope you have a wonderful week, and as always, I wish you love, light, and peace. Take care. Bye-bye.